last time on Lawful Stupid. <laughs> Is that it? Oh yeah, it was very creepy whistling very at the very end there. Um, Frost is attempting to prepare a spell to transport us and then the whistling begins and here's like right here's where you should play it right, right here right, Dwayne. Here. right now nope remember from last episode you don't guys use your memory don't play it. It w- well we know he's not coming back this episode yeah. so we're good it's fine yeah because yeah, Dwayne him, doesn't so have it ready that. to go so that means he's not coming so we're safe <laughs> we're safe from the horrible terror of my dreams or someone's dream, Take that whistleblower. Yeah, well, that's true. Mm. I think we pretty much nailed it, Dwayne. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah, it's real good. I think I'm I'm equally both horrified and impressed. So, so a regular episode of Lawful Stupid. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you wake up. You feel the damp, mushy grass beneath you as you stir awake. The cool night air crisp as it dances across your skin. You open your eyes and you see the night sky above you, void of stars. The single white orb that is Maliv hangs loosely above you, bathing you and your surroundings in a soft pearl glow. You instinctively sit up, and before you, a dragon-shaped gravestone stares back at you. Reflexively, you read the contents of the placard. Christoph Shindo. Savior of silence, hero of Oxbane, cherished son, and beloved brother. He fell at the feet of fate. His sacrifice will live on through the closed doors and safety of Goron. And Kristoff, as you look around, you see gravestone on gravestone on gravestone. And in the distance, you see a mausoleum. And iron gates. Uh, yeah, okay. Hold on a second. Let's go here. Sounds like you got a ring you got to give back to I'm somebody. To, I'm, I'm really trying to think of his name. Wayland, Wayland. you f- dickless traitor! Where are you? Oh, I'm sorry. I, order of operations. Hi, I'm Christoph Shindo. What is this? Well, Christoph Shindo, hero of... Oh. Wayland, you dickless traitor! Where are you? So you hear from the opposite side of the tombstone, the gravestone. I don't think he's going to be of much help. Do, do I see anyone? Uh, so you you don't necessarily see anybody until you like stand up and then you look across. And as you look over the larger, more ornate dragon tombstone, you see a very familiar figure with uh, two pink braids down her back. And um, just like this pale, um, like white skin. And as she stands up and turns around, you see Alaria. You liar. Hello, Crystal. Oh. I'm sorry. I was angry at first. But I've had plenty of time. I forgive you. You have to know. I thought you were killing. You? I didn't know there was something else there. You've thought a lot of things and been wrong so many times. That won't be the last. And if you don't keep thinking before acting, it will be your last. makes sense. What did you do? What do you mean? You're here. 
What did you do? How did you die? Well, that's interesting news. I just kind of woke up here. That's... Oh, at least I saw my killer. Well, there was this... figure, and it was approaching me, and it was... whistling. That sounds terrible on a couple of levels. I... But I didn't feel any sort of pain, and I was... don't think that... That's pleasant. I experienced a lot of it. I... Once again, I'm, I'm sorry. It's fine. I... I just don't... I, I, I don't know how I got here. I don't... I don't feel dead! I don't think... I, I'm not done yet! But you're dead. I, I don't feel dead. I'm dead. Well, you've you've had time to get used to it. Oh, I, you, you do too. You have plenty of time. Do you remember anything? I was with Atlas. And I was... We have, we have a new traveling companion, Ezreal. And right. We were traveling... And then this figure with this whistling, and it was getting closer to me, and closer to me, and closer to me. And I was hesitant, and I had a, a trick or two up my sleeve ready to roll, but uh, I was wanting to see what would happen. I didn't want to make a hostile move, because I didn't know it was hostile. Creepy as fuck, but... Do you know where you are? This is, um... Uh, the graveyard of legends or some such. Wayland lives here. I mean, he did. One of one of the the dominions of. When did you say did? I, yes. What happened to him? You happened to him. Oh yes, I'm wearing the ring, aren't I? So now it's my turn, huh? Is the ring on your hand? Yeah. So when you look at it, that glass is cracked. I'm wearing a lot of rings. I'm blinged the fuck out. <laughs> Where the gem was, like the of Wayland's ring, it's cracked. Huh. Well, that's less than stellar. It's not great. Well, but. You've got something I don't. What's that? You've got the ring. Head back. If you're not done, head back. What is this? Is that how that works? She kind of shrugs at you. I can't leave. I'm stuck here. But maybe you can. Hmm. This ring would do it. I take off the ring and I kind of toy with it. Trying to see if I can't see any sort of arcane runes on it or any sort of anything. No, you don't see anything that like um, gives you like pause. You just know that it's uh, like super different. And um, doing a callback, you remember that like there kind of there always has to be a a way a, a Wayland. A keeper to the graveyard of legends. Yeah, and when you killed him, you took that responsibility. Right. But she's saying I can go back using the ring. Probably. And she kind of like looks towards the gates of the graveyard. They won't open for me. Maybe they'll open for you. But I also don't have a reason to go back. Not anymore. I can think of one. I doubt it. I can think of two. I'm all ears. One's big and has tusks, the other one's small and criminally insane. I do miss Rowan. <laughs> and Yark. Atlas and Findle. 
Yes. But it's not my time to go back. I know that. It took some time and a couple conversations with Wen. But it's not my time. It and she kind of reaches over and takes that ring from you. Mm -hmm. And she says, let me hold on to this for the next person. Hmm. You go. It could be you, you know. You could be the one to go back. I, I would deserve it. Yeah. You're probably right. But I kind of knew this was coming. And as much as I fought it, I should have expected it. I, I should have known that it was inevitable. It's fine. We all have our stories. We all make choices. This is where mine's led me. Is there anything I can do for you? Back there. Tell Fendel it's not his fault. Tell him that my mom would still be proud. I know she would be. I can do that. Tell Atlas he's a big dumb idiot. I plan was planning on doing that anyway. I know, but tell him from me. Mm -hmm. And tell him that he'll always matter to me. Um and that I hope the road he's going down is his road and not someone else's. If, um, if I see him or if I can make contact, is there anything you'd have me say to Kenra? Tell him that I'm sorry. You've been here for a while. You've spoken with Wynn. Is there... Is there any way to fix him? Fix what exactly? There's so many things that have gone wrong. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, I can do that. Thank you. I'm sorry again. Just do me a favor and shut those damn doors. I can do that. And stabilize Goron, not just silence. I can do that too, I think. Or I can damn well try. And if not, I'll see you again soon. I have a feeling that once I leave this way station, that is Wynn's plaything his middle ground for stories I don't think we're going to the same place you're probably right but I do wish you the best of luck and believe it or not I'm gonna miss you I don't really know how this works if you but um I'm going to pray for you. And she kind of smiles and uh, laughs a little bit and says, You do that, but maybe say my name. Oh, fuck, son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> so many. God damn, A name! They both start and end with A. They're the same name. You changed the middle sound. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This has been Lawful Stupid Presents. <laughs> Fuck Immersion you, broken. Shane. I don't really know how this works. But Alaria, I'm gonna pray for you. Thank you. And she kind of motions uh, towards the gates of the, the graveyard. I walk towards. Yeah, you uh, you kind of begin to go through the the gravestones, and you're kind of like seeing um, names you remember, names from your childhood, and like people you know that are dead. And you like look on their gravestones, and they're accurate, and like what their demise was was like based on the vague statement on some of the gravestones was accurate hmm. kind of giving you the feeling that this is the the written accounting yeah of people that you've known and so you you approach these big iron gates and you kind of push And there's nothing but darkness until you reawaken in front of Atlas and Ezreal who are just kind of watching you like just both of you are just like stunned and here's why while he was in Wayland's graveyard he's like speaking unintelligibly like the entire time and like standing still and like in a total trance like you guys would have imagined he's like possessed or whatever it's very blank stare forward and gibberish slash draconic slash common slash infernal slash dwarvish slash orcish him, yep, 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 you're I'm Christoph Chindo. But is that thing still there? The thing's gone. Did we see a thing? You guys saw Okay, it. but now it's gone. As it, like, he woke up, you saw it step forward through him. What uh, did we just witness? I, Christoph, are you um, okay? I died. Did did you? Yes. But I lived. I I died. Um, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna try to avoid doing that again. Uh, Devin. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the games are hard. No. Atlas. Oh, yes. Alaria. Yeah. What about her? She, sa- she says you're a big, dumb idiot. But you'll always have a special place in her heart. Where did you see Alaria? I remember that graveyard. Wayland's graveyard. Remember that one? Oh, yes. There was a... Another tiefling that we ran into last time. Yes, Maypree. Wait, so... Wait, Laurie is there? For a time. But if we made it back, then... She can make it back, too. Apparently it's not her time. And Atlas kind of... kind of smiles at that. He doesn't know what to say, but he kind of... Well, and she she seemed all right though. I mean, well, was she really angry? She said she was for a time, but she seemed at peace. And she said she got that way by talking to Win. Ugh. Well, maybe he's good for some people and not so much for others. Yeah. Well, what else happened? I mean. Hmm. You, 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 last time you went into some thing, you came back with new powers, and 
a uh, nap? You just, just you? You okay? Um, a little shaken up, but uh, not bad. What not was great. that thing? Fuck if I know. Creepy. <laughs> I agree. Uh, is Frost still doing, as we look over, Frost still uh, attempting to create a spell? Or folks? Yeah, he's. He, you can tell he's near the end, but he's finishing up the calculations that he was doing. Okay, well, that was strange. Oh, I hope to never encounter that again. I'll be glad yeah. to get out of here. I don't know um, how it killed me so good. And I don't know how I'm back. Considering it did me a real good kill. Um, but if we see it again, we should not try to be besties with it. That was kind of like my thought. Was that like, hey, I'm just going to be chill here. and Maybe it'll be chill back. No, I died. I died. For a moment there, I was a dead man. <laughs> so probably not a good friend of ours. But... You never fell. You just stood there. Yeah, you just stood gibbering the whole time. I promise you, regardless of what my physical body was doing, I was dead. (laughs) My being, my soul, my whatever was in the afterlife. That's horrifying. Yeah. No, for sure. Oh, we've seen stranger things. Not by much. (laughs) (laughs) Have we? Have you? Have I? Well, you haven't seen anything, Atlas. Yeah, you're... (laughs) Never mind. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, uh uh-huh. I said, uh, Frost, Uh it looks like he's he's finishing up. And so Frost finishes his calculations, and he says, uh, that should do it. Uh, Fendel, any time now. I, you guys are ready. <laughs> yes, I suppose. And as you kind of laugh before you can utter the word yes, your world is shifted, and you guys are just yanked into the heart of these beings. And you appear. And you're on, like, this balcony, and you're overlooking, like, this dark courtyard situation that's leading into, like, these double doors, like, big stone double doors. Um, and, like, you can see that there's, like, like uh, shrubs made of stone, like, shrubs and trees made of stone and stuff, and you are 100%, like, underground. You look up, and you can see ceiling and cave and across the way in front of the double doors you see a very familiar figure you see the corrupted version of Yar and Frost kind of okay all right forward then through those doors on the other side the door has to be deeper, right? Uh, and how far is Yark from us at this point where we've just materialized? Uh, you're like a good 400 oh, okay. feet. Now, now you got like a 60 foot drop like to get down because you're way up there. So you're a good distance out. But like... So I, would, I wouldn't be able to tell it's him around. from this distance, Greg. You probably wouldn't, not from this distance. He would look familiar because you didn't see Rowan's vision. Okay. So are we in a kind of like, almost an underground castle sort of thing? Staircases to either side or staircases at all? Uh, From the balcony, you have staircases behind you guys that will kind of spiral out. They're like outside fire. Exit. Mm -hmm. Exits, excuse me. And you can see that there's like other balconies along the walls. Almost as if um, other people were using them as like an audience. Mm. Mm. Uh, any fiends? Not that you see. Well, 
<laughs> you blind girl. Um, <laughs> there's only one way to go, Kristoff. Uh, you agree? I mean, yeah. We gotta get to the door. You have the key still, right? Checks fanny pack. Keys. Ah, uh, wrong fanny pack. I left a good one at home. No, yeah, so there. I, uh, I got wrong it. Eye. Oh, no. <laughs> And yeah, we have to go close the door. Oh, uh, guys, right. just uh, before we do this, uh, Christoph? Atlas. I love you very much as a friend, and uh, I do not know what's going to happen. I don't pretend to think that we're going to be able to be so lucky to make it out of every situation. And so, uh, good luck. I look at him kind of sideways for a minute. Atlas, I don't want you to misunderstand for even one second. I do not love you as a friend. You're my brother. And then I will reach out my hand like we would if I was like with the, the, the sons and to grab his forearm. I push it away and I come in for the real thing. And then I was going to do a hug. Will you let me do this? Sorry. And then hug you. And then, uh, <laughs> Israel. Yes? We don't know each other as well, but I feel like there's still a, a very strong bond between all of us. Um, just know that I will protect you to my dying breath, should it come to that. I appreciate it very much, and I'll, I'll do my best to do the same. The, bond, if, um... the bonds we uh, wage in war. Forge and War? Forge and War. Let's Forge go with that. Let's go with that. Uh, Forge. Ah, because they're Forge is, uh, ah. It's relevant and topical, and ah. I appreciate it. Anyway. You, um... Israel, you didn't have to come with us. In fact, you probably should. Uh, I know. But you did. I know. Hey, um... While we're having this quick moment of respite, uh, who was that fucking voice and what did he want? <laughs> well, from what I've gathered, you you two are familiar with uh, being under the favor, I guess you could call it, of a god. Andrew is my grandpapa. Um, I think Atlas, you and Ryle are like exes. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, <laughs> it's not great. Well, Edith and him are exes. We are exes, oh, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. Axes, yes. Oh, yeah. Axes, yes. No, things are not great there. I am sort of the same way. With but whom? But with Alistair. He's a lesser... I wouldn't say lesser. He's a child of Aya? 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 Cool. You would know that he is considered a divine which is one step down from the pillar gods. Very much like Andrew and Do I remember Andrews. anything from Steward What's-Your-Face's explanation mm -hmm. of gods to me? <laughs> like, do you want to know the Shane answer? Do you want to know whether you roll history? <laughs> well, I, well no, so what I want to know is, first of all, I already got briefed up by that steward in Oxbane mm -hmm. on god yeah. lore. Did she mention this yeah. guy? No. Can I roll a history, please? Or actually, it'd probably be more after for me to roll religion. roll religion. Yeah. That's why I said, do you want to know, or are you trying to recall that conversation? No, I was trying to, if she hadn't mentioned it, there's nothing to recall. Uh, religion, uh, natural 19. Religion is a plus zero, 19. Uh, you would know that, um, you know that Alistair is one of Aya's children and one of her like more beloved um, creations and that uh, he typically takes the form of a minotaur with like two like shackles on his wrist with these chains that seems like are always there but they don't drag across the ground they like float into nothingness mm -hmm. but that's the extent of what you remember about him it's one of Aya's hmm Glutton for punishment. Yes, he's um very lawful, it would seem. Hmm. Um 
I am an ASMR, it seems, because of him. I was born to elf parents, but no one really knew, no one wanted to admit, why I was the way I was. And I just went on my merry way. I didn't want to be a scion of a god. I wanted to be a bard. I wanted to perform and sing. And he didn't like that. Oh. And eventually it came to the point where I lost my sight. And I took up a more helpful and healing sort of lifestyle in an effort to not lose anything else. I see. So I understand being under the thumb of a god. Hmm. With a hoof. With a hoof, even. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I tell you now, I, I don't know how this story will end, but um, if it's within my capability, I will see you unchained. I appreciate it. At the very least, let's make it a fantastic ending. <laughs> Shall we? And you hear Frost say, As beautiful as <laughs> this is, we have a job to do. Sure, yeah, come Frost. on, Frost, lead the way. Um, so, uh, canonically reminding everybody that um, Devin is in molten armor head to toe, basically, <laughs> or neck to, neck to toe. Um, so he is like battle ready. He's got like that molten. Pop uh, collar. collar. It's popular with the kids now. Situation. Yeah. You know, there's a name for what that neck piece is on armor. I don't know it. I ain't worried about it. I don't remember it. it either. Um, but the the fucking pop collar version. Yeah, I, I get it. The, 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 the cone of shame. <laughs> yeah, it's the cone of shame. Stops from gnawing on his private so bits. So he can't. Li yeah, lick his just below his panty bag. <laughs> um, so you guys, uh, I just wanted to point that out. That's still a thing. Um, so you guys go down the sterile uh, staircase uh, you also level 12 you're full backup to be fair not benefits from a long rest feeling wise sure your characters mechanically you got your spell slots back your health points are back you're still fucking exhausted you haven't actually slept fair enough like just so everybody's strapping you got all your shit back I will. I woke up twice. Rested. Once in the afterlife and once in real life, and actually, that's much more tiring than just waking up regular. So you yeah, got one hundred percent. So you guys okay. go go down six flights of stairs, essentially six stories, and um, you land on this like heavy stone floor, and you can see that there's like big claw marks, where like you would expect like like footprints essentially but you can tell like whatever is moving like as it moves it drags its claws to make the next step hmm. and it is big hmm. that's not great I do not like this we must press on carefully stealthily uh, so is it possible to be stealthy we... in an open room that is made of no. stone and echoes <laughs> You can roll stealth checks, but they're not going to matter. Yeah, then um, I won't. Yeah, then no. I won't. Well, it's a little DM tip. If, they're, if the rolls don't it matter, won't. don't have them roll. Um, so you walk across... How far... You got 400 feet between you and Corrupted Yard, which you will begin to recognize him at about like 120, 140, give or take, in the conditions. How far do you go before you stop? Or do you I, like react? I think as, as, as soon as I, I realize it's him. Yeah, so about 120 feet out, you you start seeing that, that that's fucking yard. That's and he is like messed up. Uh, so when I when I see him, I don't know how we're how we're walking along. I imagine like shoulder to shoulder almost, but I'll, I'll stop. It's almost if like they walk, you know, past me, and surely they they Kristoff yeah. sees it. I definitely wouldn't notice until you stop. Atlas, what are you doing? You don't see him. See who? Look closer. 
Oh fuck. The gods play a cruel, cruel trick today. No, 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 no. Atlas. This might not be cruel. I I know it's hard to look at that and, th and think that there could be any sort of boon here, but remember, uh, what was the, the fellow, the leader of the tour? Remember in Oxbane, in the belly of the beast? Yes. He was corrupted. And yes, when he realized what had happened to him, he... He jumped from a cliff, Kristoff. He, yes, he made a choice. But he didn't have anyone there who loved him. If it's possible for him to see through this corruption to become who we know as Yarg, then it could be possible to save him. I don't know, Kristoff. Is it... I know that... Atlas, I know that things have not been great for you. I know that you've traveled darker roads, and I know that you've seen how awful things can be, but... Can you turn your back on a little bit of hope? I guess it doesn't matter now, anyway. Let's get this over with. And I'll start walking toward the door. Follow. So, as you approach, you see this figure. Um, this cross between a dwarf and an orc wearing full plate mail armor crafted from torrential titanium. Devin or Atlas, you would know that it's made in that way. It's like the, it's like colored and onyx, uh, like an onyxian color, like dark, but like still stone slash metal. And, but it like kind of shimmers as like the light, the dim light in here kind of reflects off of it. Um, and that's this open faced helmet is like showing Yarg's face, you know, that big nose he's got and like, but there's like corruption on his face, like this darkness, like the same thing, the same type of weird disfor disformations that uh, the same, the leader of the tour had. And then you see in his right hand, he holds like a giant morning star. It's almost like, it's almost like it should be two handed and then in the left hand, you see a simple spade. Yog, is that you? Little Pop, you've come a long way. Yeah. You should go home. I, I can't go home, Yog. There, there is no home to go to. That's because you let me die. You see, that's the thing, Yogg. We, we, the people we love never truly die. Back to differ a little bit. But yet here you are. Here I am. I've been waiting for you. And how, how do you, how do you explain that? A gift. From a friend. He like, see him smile when he says that. Who, what friend is this? Don't bother. You won't meet her. I think I know who your friend is. Carries a large scythe. Controls. Oh, you met her? Forces of you. We have met her. And it matters not. You won't be getting past me. So now the, the ones who took your life, the ones who took your life are the ones that you're fighting for. You know you could blame them? I get that. You're young. I blame you. You blame me? I blame you. I'm going to take a step forward or two. I, I want to be probably within 
I'm not going to swing on him, but that close. You, okay, you want to get like within 10 feet of him? Yes. All right, cool. You you are real close to this boy. I follow him up, up you, to you, 60 feet and then stop. <laughs> you see you see that he towers over you, which he was already kind of taller than you, but he's got a few more inches on him. Um, and he uh, looks at you and says, You abandoned Oxbane. Abandoned Oxbane? You listen here, Yog. I loved you as much as my own father. You took me in and you taught me many things growing up. You taught me how to be a better person. You gave me a path, helped me forge a path for myself. And when you died, the only thing I could see was rage and anger. And I was set on a path of, of vengeance and destruction. I would have found you here now and you blame me. If anything, I I should blame you for the path that I was set on. Why did you why did you have to go and die? Why didn't you fight back? What how is this my fault? And he kind of smiles and he says Atlas Do me a favor. What? Show me what you've learned. And he charges you. So, we have a choice here. Atlas can fight and deal with him, and you guys can move on past the door behind him, or you all can attempt to fight your. Kevin? I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and tell you this is what Atlas will say. I, it'll take like a defensive stance, of course, to protect himself. Well, so it, tell me what you want to do and I'll help you with the narrative. Yes, and I'm just going to I'm just gonna look back at them and say, I'll take care of this. You go on ahead. So this is why I wanted you to tell me what you're going to say. So Yorg leaps forward and comes down with the, uh, the Morning Star and you bring up Willow and Clash and the two of you kind of exchange blows where like he swings and you kind of parry parry and dodge and then use your left arm now covered in molten armor to block and then you swing and hit and hit and like these hits are echoing and from afar you guys can watch as like the stone below them is starting to crack under the pressure of their blows and that's when Atlas turns around and says I'll take care of this you two go on ahead and Frost says, You heard him. We've a job to do. Do you think you can handle this, Kristoff? I think that Kristoff is trying to move and like his feet just like aren't going and he's just looking at Atlas and he's looking at Yarg and he's just I can't look away. And then I will, what, if, while he's doing that, I remember that I have the key and I will take with my free hand and yell, go and throw the key at him. I catch it and I start to leave. I think I just keep looking over my shoulder like, Come back! Don't disappear on me. And so you guys continue through the door. Um, Ezreal, Kristoff, and Frost. So you go through this door. And it's a long bridge again. A very long bridge, this time 20 feet wide. And on the opposite end maybe a few football fields a thousand feet in the distance you can see this door this huge biggest door you guys have ever seen you've only seen one truly but large door and in the background there's you can see that green portal like swirling energy and you know that's the door 
And I assume we begin walking forward. Hmm. And you walk forward. And it's not long before you get to the the two double doors and or not the two double doors, the double doors, and you see kind of at the entrance of the doors, a hundred feet forward, catching you guys well ahead of the time, you see the elf in wooden armor and her copper skin and holding the double bladed scythe. And she's standing next to these two like they're like four foot tall on all fours and they're like these fiendish like almost like dog beast things that she's like petting one and with one hand and the scythe is in the other and she says to the three of you it's good of you to come save me the trouble of tracking down one of the shindo I'm just gonna crack my neck. I'm gonna give you a new fucking necklace. <sighs> and Frost charges forward ahead of you guys, his uh, artifact in tow. And he says, I'm going to put you back through that portal and shut that door. And you watch as the two of them begin to spar, like before you can even like react and you watch as like frost's blasting magic and she's shielding from it and he goes in close to like kind of like impale her like you're watching all this ice like trail behind him you've like never seen somebody bring this like torrent of speed and power and it's just these like waves of ice shards falling up behind him about to mount this big huge attack when she cuts him down and you watch him fall and his ice fall with him and you start pouring snow like this, like drenching watery snow pouring over the edges of this bridge. And she laughs. How far away? You are, um, I mean, I don't know how far away would you stop? 60 feet. <laughs> yeah, you're 60 feet away. I cast telekinesis and I select his artifact. Okay. Which I bring to me. You have that thing. And I hold it. And how's that feel? Real good. Uh, so you cast telekinesis, you pick up you pick up the artifact and you yank it back over. And at the same time that you do that, she puts her scythe in him and pulls up. And across from you stands Frost. Corrupted, not disfigured, not dismorphed. The very same Frost who turns around and looks at you, missing his eyes, his face sunken in, just gone. And you see him take a step forward towards you. And that's where we're going to end the episode. Yeah, that figures. Yeah, that's about right. Maybe we shouldn't have left Atlas. <laughs> <laughs> He's dead. That's it. I'd have to be the next few sessions. It's cool. Cool, cool, cool. That's, that's how Atlas's story ends. That may be how our story ends, too. The two squishies just have to walk ahead on their own. <laughs> Hey, speak for yourself. Okay. I'm not that squishy. I used to be a dragon. I'm, I'm not tough. that squishy. I got 87 hit points, dog. Don't laugh, <laughs> asshole. It's a lot for a caster. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. You're right. You're right. That is a lot of HP. <laughs> for a caster? I love that Devin can barely the tactic not now. laugh. The, yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> no, remember that's my new like way of like just agree with whatever. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. there's a lot of HP. It is a good bud. Foo doggy. <sighs> Devin, um, 
Are we in the end game now? Are we in the end game? I think we're in the end I game. I think we're in the end game. We're in the end game. If we're not, this podcast, this this campaign's going off for another <laughs> 40 episodes. No joke, though. Having fucking flashbacks. Walking up on that bridge. Oh, shit. Belly of the Beast full on. Mm-hmm. Yep. Did you mean to do that? De- uh, Dwayne doesn't. Mm-hmm. Dwayne just, mm-hmm. just, mm-hmm. just gives just nothing stares. away. Straight yeah. poker face. Oh, he winked. That means he wants to sex me. Or did no, he just one eye. <laughs> he blinks with one eye. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot that one of his eyes is glass. Hey, um... Yep. Secrets out, boys. Michael J. Fox Foundation. Oh, yeah, I need to write that down. Uh, for those who don't know what he's talking about, we're, we're for rolling humanity. for humanity. Michael J. Fox Foundation. Um, it's a really, really worthy cause. You should check it out. Seven. Seven dollars. All right. Um, you see this, Shane? I just want to point out I'm being a good boy. I'm writing down the numbers as we roll them, so I don't have to ask you at the end of the month. I just go back and listen to them. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, did you know that if you tweet using the hashtag Supercast, <laughs> I will sing your name and our Twitter handle, whichever is easier to rhyme for me on the podcast. Oh, did you know that it looks like we got one in from a guy named Dad's Butt. Ready? Go ahead and sing that one. <laughs> well, I love you. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. It's your, your bag. I was <laughs> messing around. I love you and you love a lot, but you're not a slut. You're Dad's Butt. Dad's Butt. <laughs> uh, yeah, super good. Uh, I want to say uh, when I don't think we've necessarily hit this fact that when this season is over we will be moving on to campaign two give it to um i'm going to say and just go ahead and let everybody know um once we end this season should we have interest we will do a qa where i will literally answer whatever you want to know about goron so if because this story when this ends this arc will kind of end and it'll lock in all these events as far as like because I, I do short stories dude and like write most of time and shit like that the patron stuff it will kind of lock these events into place for the most part um i will never change the core things that have happened so if you have questions about things i will answer i will say 98 percent of your questions I, I, to your fulfillment i will say this as well Dwayne, just to kind of piggyback um we have a business model, if you will, at Lawful Stupid, which is you will do a campaign in a homebrew world that you create. And then when that campaign is over, Dwayne will pass the reins to a new DM, which is to be determined. <laughs> Don't know who that's going to be yet. It's me. It's me. It's me. It's going to be a nautical campaign. Uh, and, and, and it's going to be a, a new homebrew world. And then I'll pass the reins off to someone else to be determined it's Devin <laughs> and then <laughs> and then he'll pass the reins off you know after that campaign is done but eventually it, it is going to loop back around to Dwayne and when it's Dwayne's turn again he's not going to create a new homebrew world we're going back to Goron we're going back to Goron Ooh, and, that's and, cool. and, and and we're leaving our our these stories these don't we're not closing the book on those forever so live shows bonus content we might we're definitely almost certainly going to go back to goron again patron games almost 100 percent. yeah patron games are already in right. goron right like and i've goron is my world it will be the world that i use i'm just meaning this podcast story will become locked i will right. not use time travel or any other methods <laughs> to change their events like these events will be locked and now supporting characters side stories all that shit i'll do whatever the fuck i want with but i'm just saying this will be locked and like <laughs> So I'll answer the questions that you guys might have about the world that, like, maybe were eating you up. Like, what the fuck are these creatures? How come teeth is feral? <laughs> <laughs> Why do teeth lens have fur? Mm. <laughs> How come teeth feral? How come teeth feral? No, so, uh, <laughs> lo- lots of things to look forward to. Um, the number one thing that I look forward to every single month is receiving my 
endless bag of dice from Critical Dice. <laughs> Every single time that I get them in the mail, it makes me so happy. It never ends. It's a very low price. And if you use the coupon code lawful stupid to check out criticaldice.com when you get your endless bag of dice, you're gonna get the first month for free. All you do is pay shipping. That is a steal. And last month there was a pin in there. It's a cool axe. Put it on my cork board of nerdy pins. Uh, right over there next to my uh, medal that I received as a hero of Goron from my sweet sweet DM. Hero of Oxbane. Oxbane. God damn it. Well, you know what? I think I'm a hero of Goron too. Well, not yet. We'll see if we uh, survive. Yeah. That, that being said, one thing we don't talk about enough is if you're a $50 patron, you get to listen to these episodes live as we record them. And you get every other benefit, patrons, patron one shot, item, character, all that good stuff on top of the Waffle Stupid Crate. Yeah, we're uh, curating. And the last one was real good. Yeah, curated items um, chosen by the nerdiest boy that we know, um, me. I send them to your door. And you get them as a special uh, gift and a thank you from me. Um, past items have included D&D comic books, dice bags that are made of chain mail, Christmas ornaments. The character you know, Christmas, creation yeah, book Christmas, you, you just said was real good. Yeah, uh, the, the, the D&D uh, How to Make a Character Background book, which I got Devin for his birthday, which is I just wish... It's a really good it's book, and it's nice. just very helpful in creating backstory. So there's all kinds of really great stuff um, that I, I will send to your door just because thank you so much for all of your support. So, I think we do what we have to do. we we'll just say bye. Oh, okay. God. <laughs> We're playing tomorrow, right? No. Because I have a thing. Monday. Wednesday? <laughs> no, in fact. I can do Wednesday. I'll no. Just start, I can do start Wednesday. another joke yet. So we're playing tomorrow. So you just keep harassing me until you get to Monday. Um, bye. 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 Yeah, you are great. <laughs> it makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs>